Hey everybody, I'm Scotty J, and you are watching Rock Titan Live. And uh, you know, social distancing continues. But as this is all going on, I'm still trying to do my best from bringing you closer to all the greatest musicians on the face of the planet Earth. And right now, as you can see on the screen, I've got one of the greatest voices in metal from one of the greatest metal bands of all time, Mike Howe. Metal Church! How you doing, sir? You are too kind, Scott. I appreciate that. Well, I mean it. I mean it sincerely. And I told Kurt this a little over a year ago when uh, you guys had released your 12th studio album, Damned If You Do. So we had a chance to talk about that a little bit. And, of course, now we've got a, a whole new uh, you know, product coming out from you guys on April 10th, from what I understand, from The Vault. Yeah, from the vault. <laughs> Man, so, uh, now I know these are all songs that were your era, you know, that you had done. Now, are these songs that literally the Metal Church fan base has never heard before, or are these just some that you'd kind of redone? Uh, well, <clears throat> there are three live track, two live tracks, so uh, those uh, from Japan, which we recorded when we uh, toured there last year. Okay. And then... There's a, a remake of The Conductor, uh, which Joe uh, O'Brien from Rat Pack Records, uh, a great guy who works really hard for us, uh, suggested because over the last four years, he dubbed me on our Facebook page, The Conductor, so he thought that would be cool for me to do. So I, I do anything that Joe asks, almost anything <laughs> that right Joe on. asks of me. But, so we did that, but all the other tracks are uh, unreleased tracks from the Damned If You Do era and some uh, experimental covers that we tried a few wow. years back that th we didn't put out yet. And uh, then three songs we went back and finished from a past year, but we decided to finish them and see how they would turn out. And we were pretty happy with the way they turned out. So it's kind of a mishmash of all that stuff. All right. Now, any of these uh, songs go back to uh, when you had long hair? <laughs> no. No, they're all new from you know since i've been back in the band the performances and the recordings you know in the last four years they're all from that okay that all right all right so we'll touch on that well, one thing i gotta ask you mike where do you get off still having a full head of hair and i know kurt probably shares my <laughs> sentiments on that one man <laughs> well it's funny because i think it's cooler to not have a full head of hair the bald look is way cooler than the short hair look so yeah. i don't know I'm I'm the nerd uh, of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you had some killer long locks though back in the day, and you yeah. look like you could still pull that off too. I know. Well, even like you know Bruce Dickinson, you know he was all clean cut there, looking corporate America, flying around in his own personal jumbo jet there, you know. But then he grew his hair long again. I think you should do it, man. I think you should grow your hair out. Oh, he did. He grew it long recently. I don't know if it was recently, but over like the last few years, yeah. Oh, I have to check that. Look at look he, he at had he's like. he's had some long hair. I had to go back and look myself. Yeah, man, I was pretty blown away, and I'm like, yeah, it's long, it's gray, but man, it looks awesome. And yeah. look at you don't even look like you have any gray hair, man. Uh, just a little, just a little right here, man. But, uh, I tell you, I guess what, I'm lucky. You're, yeah, you're, Jeans, you're rubbing it in our face, rubbing it in our <laughs> face. I don't mind gray hair, but um. No, that's, you know, that's funny. I have a, a, a back and forth with Rick, our, our guitar player, Rick Van Zandt. He's, he's, always, he's the one in the band because he's got the beautiful long Spanish locks that he has. And he, he's always been trying to egg me on to growing it back out. And he said he would, he even went down to the point of he, where he'd get a tattoo of my name on his shoulder if I actually grew my hair back <laughs> out. But, so we had fun bantering. But I guess I'm just a, uh, I have an issue with the in-between look. Mm. <laughs> well you've been there before you've been there before and i i, did, I just think it's funny because uh you know I, I going back over you know the entire catalog of metal church and and just all the years um you know that you've been with them especially you know i go back to that and you know of course you're with them like you know 88 through 96 and you know, then took a break and then you came back. And, and it's funny because when I was checking out the official music videos for Damned If You Do, which I love, by the way, I thought it was funny. I can't remember which video it was for which song, but uh, it was like you're going out of the house 
And it's like you, you pretend like you're leaving for work, like, you know, all business, you know, like yeah. corporate America. And you, pl and you and you just looked apart. I mean, if I didn't know that, you know, you were Mike Al, you know, I'm thinking lead singer of Metal Church. I would think that, you know, you were like the, the CEO of some Fortune 500 company. But that's like, th that's exactly what the uh, music video was, though. And I just thought it was so funny. It's like you go out to the mailbox, you know, kiss the wife goodbye. And then you're back in the house and the whole band is rocking out. And do you know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, it's called By the Numbers. Yeah. yeah that song. And, <laughs> and that's exactly what it's about, living my life by the numbers. And so, you know, those guys, uh, it just shows that, you know, sometimes we're not happy. Uh, money and status and all that, uh, it doesn't always make you happy if you're not doing what you love to do. So we just, it was a tongue-in-cheek thing. And we really had a, a great time making that video, as you can see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was awesome. And it's just so funny. And, you know, as I told Kurt then, I will tell you now, you sound better than ever, man. You know, and I know, and I know he echoed those sentiments. But, uh, Matt, so I'm, I'm curious, in, in the time you were away from Metal Church, you know, from your, <laughs> your first act to your second act, if you will, were you still involved with music? Were you doing anything to kind of keep your chops up? Or had you just completely walked away from the scene altogether? Well, I mean, I'm a singer, so uh, you can't stop me from singing. And I just annoy the crap out of my family and those around me. But and that's what singers do. They have to sing. And uh, I didn't join a band or anything, but I have friends around here that are musicians. I live in an area that's very heavily uh, influenced with artisans and musicians. And, yeah, I got together and, and just did some house jams and sing with uh, my friends that play instruments, but not metal, uh, just any kind of different kinds of music to sing, because I like singing anything, you know, so I did that, but it wasn't to keep my chops up per se, it was just to to uh, be able to do something that I love with musicians, but uh, you know, other than that, uh, yeah, I just stayed away from it and was a, uh, became a fan of music like uh, everybody out there that is probably listening right now. That's wild hearing that from you. And again, everyone, we are here with Mike Al from Metal Church, one of the most awesome metal bands on the face of the earth. And uh, again, you know, just talking about that voice of yours. And, and, and you just brought up the fact that, you know, you had, uh, you know, just kind of horsed around with some other musicians, you know, just having fun with things and whatnot. Had you ever thought about like a solo career or even, you know, playing some kind of music apart from what you've done in Metal Church, like a totally different style? Is there any other kind of music that you like to sing in particular? Well, yes. I mean, I love singing the blues. I love, I love singing any kind of genre that moves me. But I feel that for me, um, my voice is unique in the style of metal. And... And people, I, I say this to people who are asking the question that you do in my family, why don't you sing this other kind of music? And I think, well, you know, I don't think when I sing normally in, 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 in a melodic way, I don't think my, I think my voice is good, but I don't think it's any kind of unique in a different uh, genre of music, if you, if you follow what I'm saying. So to say I want to do that and then start a whole new career over trying to climb the ladder in a different genre, that, that takes a lot of time and energy away from your family and away from what you're doing now. And I don't think it's a little too much to, you know, to start over again in, in that world because you, as you know, uh, the music business is a difficult business to make money in, in no matter what genre you're in. So I'm happy just to be in metal church and uh, do a thing that I love. And then outside of that, live my family life and what I do at home. Right on. Well, I know all metal church fans are just happy to have you be in metal church as well. You're not going to get any arguments out of us. You know, I just thought it was interesting, you know, because some artists do like to, you know, dabble in different things. I think even like Steve Tyler, you know, you like trying to launch a country music career, you know, but to your point, it's, uh, it He's can, a millionaire, and he can afford to try that. Think, it can you know? require a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so sure. so a, a couple of interesting things that you did just touch on, though. You know, I mean, you know, as far as the music business goes and, uh, you know, how challenging it could be um, just to earn a paycheck anymore, you know, in these times <laughs> we're in. so And none more perilous 
than what we're in, you know, right now with this, you know, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, how are you guys all handling it right now? You and, and the rest of the family, uh, you, you taking all the precautions that uh, have been, you know. Yeah, yeah. I there. mean, it's scary, as everyone knows. And it's to say, you know, stop, stop doing what you're doing, stop working, stop making money, come home, and hopefully you have enough saved and to be comfortable until we see what happens. That's uh, luckily... I'm in a position that I can do that and not uh, worry about having to eat or where I'm going to pay my rent. And I just feel for the people that are living day by day and check by check that can't go to work. It's it's a very scary and sad situation. So those are the people I think about. Um, I feel very lucky in my position. Yeah, no, it's scary. I mean, and especially for like, you know, younger musicians or even musicians that, you know, say got started at a particular time, you know, the era where, you know, you weren't necessarily selling your music, you know, and getting royalties from music sales and, and, you know, for the bands that literally rely on touring. And that is the primary source of revenue, which right yeah. now, that's all out the door. I know. And that's that's yeah. the thing about music. When I came back, it was like, we have to tour to make money. That's what everyone has to do. And like you said, now, and, and it's, I don't know you know what the sign is but metal church last year decided at the end of the year to take this year off to you know uh do other things and regroup and and it just uh, we're lucky that we weren't in the situation of having all these tours lined up to do this year and having to cancel them all and, and so i don't know how that happened but we actually are lucky because of that yeah well, you're also lucky to start with Metal Church when you did, you know, the glory yeah. days. Because obviously yeah. the Mike Howe days are some of the best days, you know, commercially successful wise, you, yeah. know, that, you know, that the band has had. And, uh, you know, so I, I kind of got Kurt's spin on it. But I'm curious with you especially because there was like there was never any really bad blood from what I understand, you know, when you first, you know, took a break. What was it that made you come back? Um. Kurt Vanderhoof, once again, you know, and I was going through, a, a, you know, a personal change in my life uh, when he connected. It was it was almost like, you know, one door closes and another one opens for me at that time in my life five years ago, six years ago now. But yeah. And so he came back into my life for whatever reasons, just started talking. We started talking and I said, well, why not? Let's just see what happens here. And uh it turned out to be perfect timing, you know, and when he approached me, I was like, no, I, I'm not really into that because I still had the same issues about when I left the music industry. And then he and I had many talks about how it's different and how he has a studio and how we can, we have full control of what we do and no one's going to mess with us. And, and I said, well, that's very, uh, you know, enticing. So basically when I came back, I came back as we have to have new music and see if we can still do it before I'll be in a band and go touring. And that, and that's what we did. We started writing. He started sending me, um, drop boxing me uh, songs that he'd written structures for. And I'd listen to them and start making melodies. And he kept writing more and more. And I kept getting more interested and more exciting, seeing how he was inspired. And it was very, it was a very, a lot easier of a transition than you would think. It's like coming back together with an old friend and it's the same. And uh, it was very exciting for me. So that's why I came back. We did a record. I was very excited about it, very proud of it. And it was new music. So I said, I'm in, let's go tour it. And then when we did that, uh, before Damned If You Do, I said, here we are back to square one, same philosophy. Let's see what we can write. If we can write another record that I'm at least proud of or more proud of, I'm in. But if it turns out that I don't feel or he doesn't feel it's as good, then it, then it might be over. So we did that, and we felt that Damn If You Do and the material we, we wrote for that was even better in my, in my heart and his. So that was very exciting. And so that's how we approach it, you know, year by year, day by day. And new music is what drives us not not touring the same old same old but still being able to be an artist and create right on well it sounds like uh vanderhoof could write his own book like you know somewhere in the lines of the art of the negotiation and what it takes 
to retain the brotherhood, you know, to retain the chemistry. Bring them all back. Bring them all back. Let's keep this train rolling. That's awesome, man. Now, that's cool. That is so cool. Very convincing guy, yes. Yeah. And he delivers upon what he is uh, talking about is the main thing. Yeah. Well, one thing he kind of touched on that I think is really, you know, unique and special that I've heard from a lot of other artists that are with Rat Pack um, that you do have like such a great relationship you know they work with you you work with them and you're really able to kind of you know control things from a business perspective the way you want and uh, you know I know that uh, but damned if you do you did that with Rat Pack too if I'm not mistaken yeah well this is another aspect of the business of why I'm still here is because of Rat Pack Records and Joel O'Brien and Tina and Jen and them there they are a for real, a grassroots, you know, give a damn about you record label that you can talk to. I talk to Joe a lot. Oh, cool. And he's a great guy, and we're friends, and he he gets me excited about things, and he's always trying to, he, he's, a, he's like one of our biggest fans, and he works the hardest for us. And so I, I appreciate that so much, and you know, I, I would do almost anything for him because he's I've seen what he's done for us. Right on. Now, that's awesome. Now, you know, you talk about the writing aspects of it, you know, and as long as you guys keep producing good material, you're in. You're not going anywhere. So, you know, when you come back, you got that Roman numeral 11, you know, right before Damned If You Do. Could we be looking forward to another Roman numeral that's like two X's and a one, you know? <laughs> Can, can can we see, you know, a 21st studio album in the future? Or are we getting too far ahead of ourselves here? You're damn straight. We're going to write a 21. You <laughs> yeah, you guys have to be cranking them out, you know, or you'd be maybe doing something that no one else. You'd be in the Guinness Book of World's Records, you know. <laughs> Oh man, that's too funny. Uh, but so, but are, are, you, are you guys working on new material now, though? I mean, especially I guess you know we've got this downtime. I know you guys just put out from the vault, but you know, in terms of like you know new stuff, you know, building upon what you did on Damned If You Do, is that something that uh, you've already started? And maybe we're looking at something for like twenty twenty one. Well, that's the goal. Yeah. So Kurt is busy uh, uh, doing stuff for his prog band. You know, he has a. Presto Ballet. So, you know, that was part of the take a little bit of a break uh, for 2020 so that Kurt can do other projects that he's uh, passionate about but put aside for the last five, six years. And Presto Ballet is one of them. So he's doing some writing for them and he's doing some other writing for some other projects uh, that I can't talk about. But then he's, you know, he's also going to be, uh, he also did a big change in his life. He moved from uh, Washington down to uh, Palm Springs, California. So he needed time to do that transition for himself and reset up his studio and his writing uh, area down there. So he's busy and I'm busy and the other boys are busy with other projects themselves. So it's nice to take a little break after being on the road and, and touring and a two album cycle. It's a lot of, it's a lot of work, a lot of energy. So it's nice to take a break and then get renewed sense but i think you know kurt and i will talk uh and get into the writing mode this year that's what we're we're planning on doing for the next album very cool very cool well again everybody we are here with mike Hal singer for metal church and uh oh man <laughs> awesome make sure again everybody go check out from the vault it's coming out via rat pack records on april the 10th and uh man Awesome stuff. Mike, uh, before I let you go here, any particular messages you'd like to share with your fans, fellow musicians, people in general out there in the public as we're, you know, dealing with some of the most frightening times in all of our lifetimes? That's right. No, just uh, just keep a positive attitude and go to our metal records and get inspired mm -hmm. by that, I think, to... Uh, we'll get through this like we get through everything else because we're very strong and resilient human beings. And, and I think the love and the passion that we have for the music and for each other will, will carry us through. Right on, right on. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us on Rock Titan Live. It has been a blast catching up with yes. you. And uh, all the best. Please be safe. And uh, next time we catch up with you, I want to see some long hair, man. Maybe a little bit of facial hair. <laughs> You know, I'll little, my, little handlebar action. Wig. Maybe that the that Tiger King. Maybe maybe we can rock the Tiger King look. What do you think? 
Well, Scott, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate being on your show here and uh, I appreciate you uh, keeping people informed and uh, bringing them some metal love. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Mike Hal, thank you so much again. I'm Scotty J. We rock Titan live. We're out. Right.